Hey everybody, Rob Sigma 3 Survival, and I've got a big announcement. I'm making a full-time comeback to YouTube. I'm going to be out here in the woods living the life. Uh, I'm literally going homeless. I've gotten rid of my uh, home in the city. Uh, it's been a dungeon for the last couple of years, and I just couldn't uh, live that style of life anymore. And I wanted to just completely cut loose get rid of everything that I've got and go live in my hammock in the woods. So I'm going to be coming with a whole lot of YouTube videos in the future. So stay with us and I'm going to give you kind of a breakdown on my lifestyle and how you can do this as well. Now, homelessness isn't for everybody, so there's really only certain types of people who can really kind of pull off this lifestyle. One, you need to have a basic sense of self-reliance. You probably should have some survival skills. You should have some navigation skills, but there are specific kind of demographics that this works for the best. And personally, I believe of all the people out here, there who need this style of life uh, is, is going to be guys, combat veterans. And... Um, you know, you guys with PTSD that are, you know, collecting a check, whether it be 50% or 100%, you know, a lot of the times just sitting in an apartment and popping Prozac and whatever the fuck the VA gives you in order to cope with your problems, I guarantee to you it is not half of what the wilderness will do for your overall psyche. And so, you know, this type of life is for people who already have some kind of income. I'm not saying that you can't go out on the road and make a living, but if you haven't provided yourself with, you know, some savings and, and a backup in case things fail, uh, you're setting yourself up for failure and you may end up truly being, you know, destitute and, and, and homeless without even a way to fill up your, your ride. So. Um, you know, all you combat veterans out there who are sick of the bullshit, sick of society, sitting at home collecting a check, you know, for whatever your service was, whatever kind of injury you sustained, if you really want to just kind of break loose and say fuck it and just go out there and live the life that you've always wanted to live, this is exactly what you need to be doing. I can't tell you how much happier I am since I switched over, got rid of my bullshit house, my $1,200 a month payment you know, all the bills and everything that came along with that and just literally strung up a hammock and decided to just say screw it all, you know, and do what I want to do when I want to do it and how I want to do it. So let's talk about shelter systems. Probably the single most important investment that you can make in going homeless is making sure that you're going to be comfortable every night. And in my personal opinion, I've been using the War Bonnet shelter system, hammock system, for the last three years. I've got two of them. Uh, they are bar none the best system out there, in my opinion. Uh, handmade by veterans in Colorado. They're a little bit pricier than some of the other hammocks out there, but I trust me the extra money is worth it so let me just give you a quick rundown of how this works this is a two layer uh, type hammock which you absolutely want to have uh, if you don't have two layers the mosquitoes can bite you from up underneath uh, which is going to be bad uh, I like to have a thermarest this is a cheap $25 pad you can pick up at Academy or any sporting goods store uh, and then you've got to have a you know system to keep you warm uh, the downside of hammocks is that because you have air that blows underneath you, unlike sleeping on the ground, you get cooled from two sides. So your insulation system has to be kind of squared away if you're going to, to get a comfortable night's rest in any temperatures below, say, 50 degrees. Uh, <clears throat> my three-season option is a snug pack sleeping bag. This is good down to about 35 degrees. Um, they run uh, fairly cheap. We've got stuff on the store anywhere from 80 bucks up to 300 bucks, depending on how nice and how warm of a bag you need for what you're planning on doing. You can get away with just a sleeping bag system, but if it gets really, really cold outside, I recommend switching over to a quilt system. This is basically um, silicone treated. Uh, down uh, with this wrapped around my hammock system it's good down to about negative 10 which is hammock camp and that's as cold as you're ever gonna go uh, I will say though that these are 
stupid expensive. Um, and we don't even sell them on the store. There's no margin on them uh, because it's a cottage kind of niche industry. Uh, you're looking at paying about 300 bucks for a top quilt and probably another 300, 400 for an under quilt. So that's not in everybody's budget. You're gonna spend more on a quilt system than you will on your actual hammock system. And a sleeping bag is more versatile. Uh, then I've got uh, the old school Army Wooby. Uh, you military boys will appreciate that. I use that as a supplement to my bag if it gets a little bit colder. And one of the main things I really love about the War Bonnet is that I can hang all of my stuff up here. From uh, electronics, I'll have a, a mobile or portable speaker that I put up here that I can Bluetooth with my phone. I can run uh, without internet and still have music. I've got Nightcore flashlight, uh, which has got a battery life that's ridiculous. We'll talk more about that later. I've got a headlamp. I hang my blade up here, and you can uh, tie this out from your face so that the, the netting isn't on your face, or you can actually remove this section entirely, tie this off, and you've got a chair. So it's not just a sleep system, but it's also a super comfortable chair for hanging out next to the campfire. Now the thing I love most about the war bonnet system that is unique in comparison to everything else out there is it has a shelf. So I can take my pistol, which, you know, security is, is, is paramount when you're sleeping out in the wild, out in the open. I've got this on a safari land rig if I want to go on a hike. You know, I just hook this bad boy up and it's ready to rock and roll. Throw my books, throw boots, extra jacket, whatever it is that I need. Um, as far as hydration is concerned, um, I just hang my camelback. You can either do it from a uh, carabiner or I just hang it on my sternum strap here. Then I take this and run it inside of the bug netting. And then I can have a, a drinking tube all night so that I don't have to get out to, uh, to drink and things like that. This system also comes with a, a top cover. This entire thing is removable, so you can take the bug net off if you want to go lightweight. And then you can replace it with a top cover that gives you about 15 extra degrees of uh, warmth when you're camping in, in cold weather. So the main kind of priorities when you're going homeless is going to be shelter, water, fire and food, uh, security, and then your electricity, right? So the next priority next to shelter is going to be your water system. And I just use a normal old uh, Sawyer filtration gravity system. It's a two liter bag. Uh, this is rated up to like a million gallons. I mean, I can even fill up five gallon jugs out of the creek with this thing and you know, maybe like half an hour or something like that. Uh, your bomb proof is always going to be your uh, stainless steel uh, canteen, that way you can boil water in it if you didn't have anything else on a hike, at least you got this. And then, um, you know, for my hydration system for the hammock, I always like to keep a camelback up and I can fill my camelback with clean water via the Sawyer. Your next priority is going to be fire and food. You know, not everywhere you go, you're going to be able to chop trees down and burn firewood and, you know, do it kind of the self-reliance bushcraft style. So I highly recommend picking up some kind of portable stove. This is just a cheap jobby from Walmart. This thing will cook me, you know, at least a dozen mountain house meals. Um, options for food on the road are pretty endless. I mean, there's no reason you can't get a full-size cooler, uh, switch out your ice occasionally. Uh, or you can go with foods that don't require uh, any kind of refrigeration. Uh, just, uh, you know, be mindful that those types of foods tend to have a high sodium content. I roll around with a, a large cooler um, and I just go to the grocery store when I need it. Uh, so get yourself a portable stove for sure. I think I've got maybe 20 bucks in that. And then the uh, <clears throat> cook system I like. And I also carry a cast iron. You got to. You kind of need both. You need like something heavy duty for camp when you're cooking large meals and then you need something that can kind of go on the road with you or on the trail so, uh, for when you decide to, you know, get away from the city. 
So this is an Endure cook set. Uh, it's really reasonably priced. It's what I use. We sell it on the store. Most of this stuff we sell on the store. And uh, it's just so you understand the philosophy of how I choose gear. I usually use something for a year. Um, you know, try it out, see how I like it. And then if I personally approve of the equipment, then I'll contact the manufacturer, we'll get the wholesale, and then we'll start stocking it in the store. But this thing's fantastic. It comes with a, uh, a skillet, uh, you got a lid, you got two small cups. These things are kind of useless. They're tiny, uh, but they get the job done on some stuff. And I like that it's got a little kettle, so when I'm bushcrafting like some tea, say I find some goldenrod or some uh, you know, pine needle tea or whatever I'm interested in, in making for medicinal purposes. I've got that. It's got a pot holder. It's got, uh, you know, an extra uh, bowl. And then, uh, you know, of course, you got pot, two pots to cook in. So, 60 bucks, nine piece kit, weighs like two pounds, packs up super small. Really can't beat it. The next thing that you've got to worry about is your security. You never really know what or who you're going to run into in the wilderness. Uh, you know, I've been out in the middle of nowhere and, and had, you know, poachers come up in my camp in the middle of the night, so it's always highly recommended that you're armed. Uh, there's so many different options. Uh, when I'm out in the wilderness in the middle of nowhere and I'm not worried about being concealed or anything like that, I prefer a Safari Land leg rig. Uh, it's convenient. It doesn't, uh, you know, have to sit on my side and jam into me. But in my vehicle, I keep several different types of holster systems. So if I'm going in the city and I need to be concealed, uh, nobody knows that I've got a weapon kind of situation, uh, you know, all of that stuff is packed in a tote in the vehicle. Um, you know, but for on the move, you know, if you're in bear country or something like that, um, I like to have it easily accessible. It's just kind of something I picked up while I was in Iraq. I kind of prefer a leg rig. Uh, guns don't sit that well on my, uh, my waist, mainly because I have no ass. I need to do more squats, right? Um, this thing unhooks and, um, you know, easy peasy on draw. Now, you want to have a light um, and preferably night sights. You know, because if you're out here at dark, you know, you get a black bear or a grizzly or something like that comes up in your camp, you need to be able to see what the hell you're shooting at. So I've got a Streamlight TLR1 um, and then uh, some night sights on my Springfield XDM uh, 9mm. It's all match grade. And I like, a lot of guys are Glock guys. I'm, I'm more of a, I like XD. I shoot a little bit better with it. Um, upgrade from that. Uh, is having an SBR or a uh, assault rifle pistol in your vehicle. Whatever you do, just make sure that you do not leave this stuff out to where you can view it uh, so that people, you know, who, who can see in your vehicle. I highly recommend getting a dark, dark tent on your vehicle if this stuff's going to stay in there. Keep it in the trunk um, you know, where it's out of sight. Also got to have a, a light uh, so that you can shoot with this at nighttime, and then also night sights are great. You can pick one of these up for, I don't know, five, six hundred bucks. Let's talk about electricity now. You know, when we leave our house, we are getting rid of our lights, we're getting rid of city utilities, all these kind of things, but we don't want to be disconnected from the system completely. We still want to be able to check our phones. Uh, as far as phone systems that work great for me, um, you know, I like straight talk, it's cheap, you know, 15 gigs of data, unlimited uh, data, talk and text and all that kind of crap uh, for like 55 bucks. Um, and uh, you got to have a way to charge it. So your number one way is your vehicle. I highly recommend getting some kind of charging inverter to plug into your uh, cigarette lighter or your, your USB so that you can charge uh, stuff like your laptop, um, you know, any kind of uh, equipment that you carry with you. But as far as field charging stuff is concerned, I uh, highly recommend picking up a, a Goal Zero. Uh, Goal Zero is, is fantastic. It's just a solar kit. Uh, this comes with a little lantern that I can attach to this battery pack and I hang it over here as a, as a light. Um, and this is really, really nifty. This is a mini USB charger that plugs into this that will recharge uh, any type of battery, but it's specifically made for Nightcore. And um, the great thing about Nightcore and I've been a huge advocate of their products for about the last three years. Um, 
they're cheaper than Surefire. They last longer. They're they're better in like every aspect as far as flashlights are concerned. I think the only other company that comes close to Nightcore would be uh, somebody like Phoenix. They're real similar in technology as far as the type of stuff. But this right here is a P25 Smilodon. Uh, it will run approximately 350 hours on its lowest setting. It's got a bunch of different settings from SOS, strobe, uh, multi-intensity, um, and um, it's uh, rechargeable in the field. You can charge this in your car or you can charge it off of the, uh, the Goal Zero system, but you'll see there's a mini USB right there so you can charge it without actually having to take the battery out. But I actually prefer having a charger system. This is only like 20 bucks and I can take uh, other types of rechargeable batteries and put it in there. Um, so this thing I think runs about 125 bucks on our store. I, I've been using it long before I ever, uh, you know, we started selling it. I love this thing to death. Um, then I've got the headlamp, which is the HC50. It's also on our store. I've been using this thing for about uh, three years. It runs on, I think it'll run like approximately 300 hours on its lowest setting. Um, it's got a red light for tactical use. It's got multi-intensity. It's uh, programmable. It's got a lot of uh, really cool features. And uh, when I'm sitting in my hammock at nighttime, uh, you know, one of the great things about being homeless, not having TV, computer, stuff like that, is educating yourself. And uh, I've been reading this psycho Psychology of Persuasion, um, you know, and uh, it's a fantastic book. Um, Tradecraft buddy turned me on to it, ex-Special Forces guy. Um, so I sit in my hammock and I like to read at night and I use my headlamp and just hang it here like a lantern in order to do that. Another issue when being homeless is that, you know, if you don't own property like I do, you know, obviously I've got facilities all over the country, you got to find places to hang your hammock. And there's, you know, there's always campgrounds, there's national forests. Um, something I used to do when I was younger was like urban camping. I would find uh, woodland sections in the city, find a place to park my car, and then I'd just drag, you know, well, I didn't have a hammock system back then. I would just build a primitive shelter or throw a tarp up. Uh, in the National Forest, I used to build stealth camps all over the country. That's one of the ways that I got into these skill sets was I would travel to a new location for work and then in my off time, I would basically find a place that I could build a survival shelter, kind of be off grid and focus and, and work on my overall skills. Um, you know, if you have social media, Facebook is a fantastic place to meet people so that you can like, you know, travel the country and come out and see them. I know that, um, you know, I've got thousands of friends and followers on Facebook and tons of them have offered to give me places to stay. I mean, there, there basically isn't anywhere I can't go in the country or in the world and put out a Facebook post and there's somebody who lives there that has property or access to property where I can, you know, hang my hammock up and and live for a little while and they're happy to do it. So, you know, if you're interested in finding places to camp other than just Google, you know, making a, uh, a lot of Facebook friends all around the country, not just local, and especially in the survival, uh, self-reliance, prepper community, they're a very open-minded group of individuals who like to meet other people, you know, so make, you know, an extra thousand friends uh, around the country so that you can tap into these resources and go and visit and meet cool people that will show you interesting things. I mean, go stay on a farm, you know, learn how to garden, uh, learn how to ride horses, whatever floats your boat. It doesn't really matter at the end of the day. There are resources and places out there and people willing to help you. Another place uh, to, uh, you know, kind of uh, check out is couchsurfing.com. Now that's more for urban. Let's say, you know, you want to go to New York City and hang out for a while and check out the scene. Create a couchsurfing.com account and there are people all over the world that will literally let you crash on their couch that you have, you know, they don't know you. But they do have a system of, of checks and verification to prove who you are and you've got a ratings and review system so that, you know, you, you don't get some kind of weirdo. But, um, you know, check out some of those options for when you decide to go cross country with, uh, you know, this type of lifestyle. Now let's cover how to make money, um, you know, because money is always an issue anytime someone is going to transition away from their normal lifestyle into something new. You know, homelessness is cheap. You know, you can go sling up a hammock and, and basically just all you really need is food and gas money and you can travel anywhere. 
But if you want to establish a cabin, you want to uh, have a little bit better lifestyle, have more money in order to, uh, you know, fund some of these adventures, there's a lot of ways that you can do that. Uh, YouTube is a great way of, of creating money on the side. Uh, a lot of people have channels out there that are very successful. Uh, it's, you know, going to be smaller amounts of income. <clears throat> Of course, there's our instructor course, level one through three. You know, you can own your own bushcraft, uh, open up your own bushcraft school. Um, you know, if you have property, for instance, that has timber on it, you can sell firewood. Uh, another great program, uh, something that our director of operations is currently going through, is the uh, herbal medic program from a company down in Texas called The Human Path, and it's ran by Sam Kaufman. And it's a certification program that allows you to learn basically everything that you would need to know it's something like four or five hundred hours of uh, online courses out in the field uh, doing all kinds of, of work with uh, the human path and Sam Kaufman and I I personally believe he's the best herbalist in the country and if you don't know anything about herbs um, it's a very profitable market you know you can take a two ounce tincture bottle and sell it for twenty dollars and you can set and make a gallon in one setting uh, you know so it, you're not necessarily going to get rich off of it, but it'll definitely kind of pay your bills once you establish a business. And any kind of business that you choose is going to take time. So, you know, if you do transition into this kind of lifestyle, you need to make sure that you at least have some income or a decent amount of savings to, uh, you know, kind of supplement you until you can... Um, you know, get it all together. Another option is guide school. You know, Montana, a lot of different states have guide programs where you can go and take their courses, uh, you know, for a few thousand bucks, like Montana. Royal Tynes, for instance, is a good school. Uh, you can go up there and their guide license is reciprocal in pretty much all 50 states. So you go up there, you knock out the program, uh, you know, you could live in your hammock while you're doing it. They do have barracks uh, and places to stay while you're in the program. Then they help you get work after. So there are a lot of options out there for outdoor self-reliance minded people uh, for you to go out there and make money on the side. Just pick something you love, uh, be inventive, uh, and, and, and put the time and effort in it and behind it just like you would any business in order to make it successful. Okay, so I've got my uh, hobo camp set up. I've got a uh, storage section over here. I've got some of my cooking supplies. I've got a, a, a solar cooker. Uh, all this stuff will fit in the back of my SUV or my car. Uh, a little packable camp chair. I got an Aquanes tarp here. Uh, this is a real super heavy duty uh, tarp system. It's like 10 by 13. Uh, we've got them on our website, highly recommend them. Uh, Got all my stuff planted over there in the chair. Uh, this is where I personally sleep, uh, my war bonnet system. I keep the uh, tarp off of it unless I know there's gonna be rain, uh, but it is a, it's probably the best tarp system out there that I've used, you can see it here. Um, these doors can essentially close in and block off all the wind and you can suck the tarp all the way to the ground so that there is no uh, convection coming un up underneath you, uh, which is perfect for winter camping. And the reason I got my second uh, system set up here is because I like to have friends. I like to have girls. I like to have people come over. And there's no reason that, um, you know, people can't come and visit me essentially wherever I'm at. So I have uh, two hammock systems so that I can have a buddy out here. So, you know, if you've got an interest in, uh, you know, learning some of these skills or, you know, just some questions about being homeless, connect with me on Facebook. Uh, it's facebook.com slash sigma3survival. Uh, we also have a group if you've got any questions pertaining to gear, how I set up, how I travel, these kind of things. Uh, you can search for the Sigma 3 Survival University. You can drop questions. There's a survival instructors on there from all over the world and from different schools. So, uh, you know, appreciate you watching. Share, like, and subscribe. And if, if you support Sigma 3, uh, come on out, check out a class get certified as an instructor, pick up some gear, whatever. We appreciate you from the bottom of our heart. Uh, you're the ones that make all this happen. So thanks and have a great day.